Hello, I'm Atsuba George. Now, thank God today is Friday. Now, this is the second Friday of the year. <laughs> Praise God. Listen, all these things I've been telling you all week. Sit down. Listen to them. Go to the Lord. Take your Bible. Sit before the Lord and say, Lord, I may have been against this thing. I may have believed those that say we shouldn't tithe. But I'm hearing a different aspect to it now. Can you guide me? I want to know the truth. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do. You see? Because what I'm telling you is this. <clears throat> God has designed our financial system. God has a financial system. He's designed our financial system in such a way that everyone will receive his inheritance. And who will you receive the inheritance from? From the Lord Jesus. So when you see David pray a prayer and say, the Lord bless you out of Zion. What's he talking about? This is what he's talking about. You know, you don't know. You don't know someone can actually walk up to you and give you a gift commanded by the Lord. It has never happened to me before. You know, some people don't believe. Some people just feel, I must work hard for my money. Let me tell you this truth. And it's good you know it right now. The more you grow with the Lord, the sooner you lose everything you work for. <laughs> I'm telling you this so that you get prepared. The more your ways are perfect with the Lord, the more you begin to lose everything you labored for. You know why? You see, God... When he says, my glory, I will not share with any man. What's he talking about? If you walk perfectly with God, even you, he will not let you take the glory. So you can't stand there and say, I bought this car. I built this house. Ah, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> he will so bless you that he will look at that house and someone asks you, how did you build this house? And all you can think about is the sure mercy of the Lord. And you will smile. And he said, it is the Lord. No, no, I want to know. I want to know. Yeah, it's the Lord. You see, I, I, I made some good money. But every time I wanted to start building, the Lord would tell me to do something else with the money. But you know what? One day someone walked up to me and said, Hey, remember Susie, you helped me. I said, yeah, I, I don't know. I, 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 God has blessed me. I just feel I should do something for you. Said, what do you want to do? There's a land I bought for you. Here is it. And like, wow. Why are you doing this? I could have bought this myself. I said, no. The Lord commanded me to do it for you. Oh. You don't know the grace of God. You don't know it. You don't know it. You don't know what it is for the Lord to bless you. You don't know. That's why God had to humble Job. Yeah. He humbled Job. Job was the richest man in the East. Now, if someone is the richest man in the East, what do you want to give to the person that will add to the person's life? What would you give to the person that will make the person say, wow. God is great. He's the richest man. He's the one that will make you feel God is great. You understand what I'm talking about? So God said, no, Job, Job, Job is not living the life. I want to make him live the life. And he took out everything that Job had. Brought him to ground zero. Now, if you've heard me teach on this before, you'll know why. And guess what? And God now blessed him. See, how did God bless him? The Bible said, everyone that ever knew Job came to him with an offering. God began to command people from right, left, center. Go see Job. Go see Job. Go visit Job. Oh, yeah. I'm going to visit Job. Hey, that land. Yeah, give it to Job. Okay, sir. 
Then he said, oh, Job, how is everything? How are you doing? How are you recuperating? Well, I'm, I'm doing great. God has been, has been wonderful. In fact, yesterday, you know, someone walked up to me and gave me 10,000 sheep and said, God sent him to give them to me. I said, wow, man, where are you going to keep the sheep? I, I don't know. I told him to hold on first, you know, until I get the land. Say, well, God has answered because God said I should give you my land in, um, you know, you understand? <laughs> Oh, wow, really? Yeah, that can take my 10,000 sheep. Oh, good now. I can send message they should bring my 10,000 sheep over. That's how Job got blessed. Now you ask Job, Job, how did you get all these things? What do you think he's going to say to you? The Lord gave them to me. But the one that was taken away, when you ask Job, Job, man, you're so rich. How did you? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. you like all those success motivational speakers. They tell you, you better plan and strategize. Those things fail if the breath of the Lord is not on it. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. You see an illiterate man who knows no English, but he is controlling the wealth. And you with all your strategizing and all that, you are trying to get to him to take part of his wealth. See how foolish life can be. Follow the blessing. It's good to plan. It's good to do all those things. But Hemi, follow the blessing. Open your heart to the Lord and say, Lord, I have labored enough. What did he say? He says, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You've been laboring. You want to send your children to the best schools. Yes. So you're laboring, yes. You want to build a house for your family, yes. So what did they say? Work hard. You want a new car. So what did they say? Work hard. It sounds good. But listen to me. You have a high priest who has been sent to receive your offerings and your tithes. And when, you when he receives it, he said, when you bring your tithe to him, you are saying, I believe in you. What did the Bible say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. What does it mean to have eternal life? People don't understand this. They think eternal life is the life they just live forever and ever and not die. No. Holy Spirit, give us understanding. You see, what I'm sharing with you is the living of eternal life. So if you believe in Jesus Christ, your prosperity becomes eternal. Your health becomes eternal. Now, that's why you will start something today and you will see that thing flourish to your children's children if Christ starts. Because you have found the perfect way. You have found it. And you are walking with the Lord in that perfect way. Let me tell you this. When you walk before the Lord, Consciously, I want you to think of it. Just use your mind. I'm not telling you to use to, I'm not talking about Holy Spirit now revealing to you. Use the mind that God has given to you. You go before the Lord today and say, Lord, thank you. You have blessed me. Thank you. And what do I do with it? And the Lord says, Give it to so so and so. I said, okay. Thank you, Lord. I'll give it. And then you go and then you give it to the person. He said, the Lord asked me to give this to you. Wow! And let me tell you something about when the Lord sends you. It will be exactly what the person needs. Now, what do I mean by that? I, I, I mean, it's going to be meeting a need. It's going to be strengthening someone's heart. It's going to be sorting out something. It's going to be proving to someone. It's, you're going to become the answer to someone's prayer. Now you do that day one, you do that day two, you know what I mean, day two, second time, you do that, and then the Lord says, give it to this, give it to this, give it to this, give it to this, give it to this. Hey, guess what? 
you are going to be one. Now you, <laughs> you, you remember Ecclesiastes says, in the morning, sow your seed. In the evening, don't withhold your hand because you don't know the one that God will bless. Now that was a statement made by Solomon the preacher. But now when you begin to walk by the Holy Spirit and, and you're doing that, someone will look at your life I said, wow, you're doing exactly what Ecclesiastes says. In the morning, so you'll see. In the evening, you know, give to seven, give some to six, and others to seven. That's exactly what you're doing. Oh, oh. So you see, you are the fulfillment of what he said. You see how it works? But you were not looking at that to say, hmm, I know what to do from now. I'll be sowing to different places. Now, if that's what you do, you miss the point. Because you know what? The one who blesses, his name is Jesus. He is our high priest. And his order is after the order of Melchizedek. What does that mean? He is the blesser. He is the tithe receiver. He is the offering receiver. Even Melchizedek, when he met Abraham, he was the one that told Abraham what Abraham should do with the tithe. Don't think he carried all and went to heaven. No, he instructed Abraham, well, go and read the scripture again. I mean, the Lord open your understanding. Despite what is coming on the world, God has given us a principle for blessing. And that principle is still the same ancient old way of the Lord. Go read even in the Old Testament, you know, Moses, when he was commanding them concerning the tithe, that's exactly what he told them to do. Different things he told them to do. There's the one he said, you will eat with your family, but you have to take it out of the house. Go to a place where the Lord mentioned to you and sit down there with your family and eat it. There is another one he said, you will give to the Levites. And then there's the one he called the, 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 the tithe for the year of tithing. He says, you bring the tithe, all the tithe out to your gates. And the widows, the fatherless, the, the, the strangers, they, they come and they take as much as they need to their field. So you see, I mean, even, even in, in, in the order of Melchizedek, you see the, the pattern that was left for them was to distribute it. How much more now that we have a more perfect way? What is a more perfect way? You will hear his voice and he will guide you on what you should do. But I'm telling you from experience, he tells you, he tells you do this, he tells you do that. And soon, soon, when you become perfect in this, and that's what he wants you to, to do. He wants you perfect in this, walking with him perfectly in this. That's why he told everyone, walk before me and be perfect. Now let's do exactly what I tell you to do. Soon, you realize that there is nothing you want that you don't have access to. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ah, Can we just pray? Father, I ask for an understanding heart. You are a merciful God. In your mercy, bring understanding to your children. That they will know and walk perfectly before you. And that the coming heat they will not see it according to your word because they will walk in the blessing. Rather, they will be the storehouses for many and bring your blessing to the nations of the earth. Thank you, Father. This is what we ask and we receive it with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.